Hello everyone, and welcome back. Uh, in the last video, I created a, uh, a door that was interactive, that played an animation, that worked through Mechanim, uh, that had four states for an idle closed to an opening animation, to an idle open to a closing animation, and closed again. Um, it was a very long video, and uh, so this one, I'm going to continue with that and go into um, extending functionality or inheriting from a uh, base class and then moving on to a more advanced one. So uh, my old door used to take a input key uh, and I'm just going to show you something that the new door is now going to do. So uh, when I start playing doors here, when I walk up to it, it says the player is at the door. If I hit the E key it's no longer working and this is because I've made changes. Um, now when I leave it says player left door. So I'm checking to see if the player can actually get to the door. Uh, the way that it's working now is, and I'll open this up, uh, on here, here's the base door class that's sitting on here. Uh, the base door class has a check to see if somebody's at the door as a bool. And uh, I have all the names of the states here uh, so that if I change which uh, what the names of states are on other doors, uh, such as if it's like a garage door that opens differently or um, whatever. If I, you know, if I name something weird in Mechanim, I can just change the name of it and it'll work just fine. Um, so, if input no longer works, uh, I'm going to go into what is currently available in the base door script. So, in here, I have the base door script will allow functionality for any type of door. I have the animator uh, component here as uh, named anim, the public game object for the hinge. I have four strings for the names of states that I'm going to be talking to, uh, and then the bool for if I'm at the door or not. When the game starts, it's filling in the animation, uh, the animator component with uh, the hinges animator. And then on update, it's checking for if um, if it's open or if if it's yeah if it's opening or if it's closing. It's setting the interaction to false. Uh, on trigger enter. Uh, before it was stay on trigger enter uh, if it's a player I'm printing the players at the door and then I'm setting that to true if I exit and it's a player and it says the player left the door and at door is false and then finally there's a public uh, door interact function that sends the door interact bool that was in mechanism before um, one other thing that's different up here I've set the update function to a public virtual void. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take all this information. This this is the functionality of the door. However, we need to add how to open the door. So we're going to create a new script uh, that's going to contain everything that's here. Um, and we're going to be able to get access to it. However, it's going to be hidden from us. So I'm going to go to Unity, go to my scripts folder, create a new script. I'm going to call this input door. Input door, uh, when it starts out, is going to be an empty script just like this. But instead of having anything in here, uh, up here, this is a type of mono behavior. We're going to change this to a type of base door. Now, uh, this script, if I save it, I'm going to show you. It now derives from base door. And if I go to the door trigger and remove the base door script, but then put input door on it, it now has the same functionality. And that's because it's taking uh, what base door had um, and you know using that in the script. However, as we saw, the script is empty. There's nothing here. Uh, it's because it, it inherits everything that base door has. So um, we're gonna create a, a input key that we can use to open the door. So. I'm going to do a public uh, key code. The key code uh, is going to be uh, interact key, and I'm going to give it a key code of E. And this will be changed. Uh, you can alter this in the inspector. Um, then I'm going to say, uh, I believe it should be public override void update. And this is going to give me access to the update function. If you override the whole thing and don't put anything in here, nothing's going to happen. It's actually going to remove functionality from this one. Um, 
So for instance, uh, before it would set it to false. So if I'm not setting it to false, this should just, uh, or actually it's not gonna do anything because it's, it's still set there, but if I go to the animator and you know, set it to true, it's gonna always be true because it never goes back to false. So, turn that off. Um, so what we need to do is we need to keep some of the original base functionality. And the way you do that is by typing base dot update. And then that's gonna call the original update function after the new stuff that we add. So it's gonna go through here and call this one at the end of it. Um, so I want to check if, and I had a bool for at door, if the player's at the door, and if input dot get key and then give it the interact key. Here's interact key. So if I press the specified interact key, um, then I'm going to send, and this was the, the function I had before, door interact. So if I'm at the door and I press the interact key, door interact. And that's all that script needs. That's uh, going to use the original door functionality to then uh, work with that door to make it into a input door. So now the input door has a key of E and you can change this to whatever key you want. Um, but it has a key of E and now if I hit play and go to the door, it says I'm at the door. If I hit E, it opens and I can walk in and I walk up and close it. And so now it's using the E key to interact with the door. Uh, it's, it's brand new door has its own functionality. Um, so if you don't believe me just yet, um, I have this interact door uh, or my input door. So I'm going to make a different door, I guess. Let's do, let's duplicate this whole thing and I'm gonna move it over. So this one, is going to be it's going to be an interact door but it's going to open differently this one is going to have its own uh let's do an its own animation controller so create uh animation controller this one's going to be a door um uh slide top door slide top uh this guy is going to be input doorway door slide top so as, as that says, I'm gonna have the door actually slide upwards. Um, I don't have to change the hinge necessarily, but if I wanted to um, only use the door, let's, let's do that. Let's, instead of the hinge, I'm gonna say, I'm only using the door. I'm gonna delete the hinge out of here. On door, I'm gonna add the component of animator. Animator is gonna take, um, go to my assets, here's door slide top. So on this input door, it's gonna, instead of a hinge, it's just gonna take the door. Um, and then when I press E, it's going to animate in the way that I want it to. So what I need to do now is I'm gonna go into the animator for this. So here's the animator, it says any state. I'm gonna have to create my states. So this door, let's go window, animation, add a curve. This one's going to be in animation, I'm going to call this uh, door uh, closed uh, slide top. Door closed is just going to be a transform position and it's going to sit there. And then I'm going to create a new one and it's going to be door open slide top. And so door open, I'm gonna add a curve for uh, position. And then the position here is gonna slide upwards like this. And uh, then this position I need, so I'm gonna copy it. I'm going to add a new clip. This is going to be here. And I'm gonna say uh, door opened and slide top. Door opened is going to have uh, a position. The position is going to be at this saved position. I'm 
to delete that key. So it's only here. And I'm going to do one final one from this position to closed. So animation door uh, close and slide the top. Add curve, transform position. It's going to start here and then go to close. There are my animations. Um, it's going to need to know what those states are called, um, but let's go ahead and go to the animator. Here's my states. I need a parameter. The bool, uh, it was did interact. Uh, we have to use the same one since that's what our script is going to look for. I could change the name of the bool too and save it somewhere if I wanted to, but it was uh, did interact, I believe. Let's check that make sure. I don't want to mess it up. Door interact, that's what it was. So, door interact. Um, if closed slide top is my base, uh, then I want to door open. Door open is going to happen if I did in fact interact. Um, then it's going to go to open. Sorry. So this is going to transition to here um, based on time then this one's going to transition to here if I set this to door interact and then this one's going to end up going here when it's done. Um, <clears throat> then I got to make sure that my clips, some of them are set up not to loop. So if I'm at opened, or opened I want it to loop, let's see, uh, close and open didn't loop. So uh, door open, slide top, do not loop and door open, or door close, slide top. Door close, slide top, does not. Okay, so here's door slide top, the door, um, the names of the states in here. So in here they were called, uh, we started with, okay, close state was door closed, slide top. So, slide top. Then uh, open state is door open, slide top. Then this one, door open, slide top, and door close, slide top. All right, so if all that's set up and it has the animation, my door has the animator on it, then if I hit play, let's make this bigger, Walk up to this door and hit E, and it's going to open that way. And I'm going to be able to walk, or I can't walk in, it's not high enough. But it worked. So this door opens that way, this door opens this way. I have two different doorways now that uh, I can interact with. I just have to make that other one big enough for me to walk into. Um, so that's just uh, changing the functionality of how it uh, animates. But let's say I want one that has uh, like a key on it or something. So let's duplicate slide top and I'm going to move it over here. I'm actually going to change the size of all of these doors I think. So grab each of these and just give it a little scale like that. Position it above. Let me make sure these work again. So if these are the doors, if I walk up to this one and hit it, it opens, closes, no weird anything happens, cool. Uh, slide top opens, I can now walk in, close that door, close this, or open this door, that works, nothing weird about it. Alright, so one of these doors is going to have a key. Um, so in order to do that, uh, it's going to use input door because uh, it's going to take an interact key. However, I'm going to do a locked input door. So let's do create C sharp script. Call this locked input door. Open this up. And then locked input door is going to be of type input door. And what that means is that it's not only an input door, but it is a base door as well. So, 
if input door had a key that I pressed, um, one thing I want to check is uh, bool is locked and it should be true when it starts. Uh, I'll make this public so I can see it if it's locked. Um, then we're going to go uh, public override uh, void update and then in update uh, so the original update has if I'm at the door press this um, I don't want any of this to happen unless uh, like unless I have the key or whatever so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say um, if is locked I'm gonna make this uh, if it's not locked then base update so if it's not locked everything else should work fine however if it is locked I want to say if input dot get key and let's say uh, do I have interact key still yeah there it is so there's my interact key if I press my interact key then I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to print uh, unlocked let's save this uh, obviously we will want something that is actually a key to unlock it which we will do in a moment so locked input door uh, this guy over here is going to be the locked door so in the locked door I'm going to remove input door and I'm going to put locked input door uh, there's is locked uh, instead of a hinge it's going to use the door and then the names of these were different so I have to make sure that I copy that over they were all with slide top at the end so make sure you name your states properly So, uh, locked input door, let's call this input doorway, this will be locked input doorway. So, uh, and I'm going to open this up so I can see messages of it functioning. Here I am, if I walk to the locked input door, I'm at the door, press the E key, it says unlocked. Um, it spammed it uh, just because it, it happened quite a bit, but it is in fact unlocked if I hit E again. Uh, is unlocked. Give me one moment. So, if it if it's not locked, then base up. Oh, I'm setting it to true. I need to set that to false. Is locked should equal false when I unlock it. Then it probably wouldn't do that so much. So, at the door, unlocked, and it opened. Um, so I wanted to get it once instead of getting key. I'm going to say get key up. So when the key is released, I'm going to set it to unlocked instead of just getting the key in general. E, now it's unlocked. Now get key. And now it opens. Um, so I need a object of sort, a key for the player. So I'm going to create a real simple script. It's going to be called uh, key ring. Key ring is going to go on to the player. Key ring is going to have a value. So in here I'm going to say public uh, has key equals false. Um, oh, public bool, sorry. Public bool has key equals false. And then for the locked input door I'm going to have to get the player somehow. So, base door needs some new functionality. Um, in order to get the player to check if they have a key, I need to probably check for a player. So, public game object uh, user. And so the user will be whoever's at the door. If it is, so let's say, uh, user equals other dot 
game object. So whenever something comes to the door, that's going to be the user. When someone leaves the door, user is going to equal null. That means there's no longer a user at the door. I want that value to be completely closed down. Um, so key ring, if I have a key and input, I'm going to say, so if it's locked, uh, if, it's, if it's unlocked, do this. If input dot, uh, let's see, get inter, uh, so I get the key, uh, or hit the interact key, but I also want to check, and I'm going to say and, and then I'm going to say user, because I now can get user, uh, does not equal null, and user dot get component key ring, and then uh, has key. And so that was has key here. Yeah, has key, get key ring. Actually, I typed this wrong. This should be open close. Now has key shows up. Okay. So if I press the interact key, the user is not null. So there is a user at the door and the user has a key. Then I will unlock it. Else, I'm going to print door is locked. Save that. Go out here. I'm going to hit play. So the door is always locked right now because I'm not there. Um, I need to make sure that let's see, update that it's locked. I want to make sure that I'm at the door still. If uh, Say if at door, and then put all of this in here. I know that that means that there's an if at door underneath all of this, um, but that's okay. I'm just going to check it again to see if someone's there. And honestly, if someone's at the door, the user won't be null. Um, so I can get rid of that. So save it. If I'm at the door, then I'm going to do this. that out. Hit play. I'm not at any door. However, if I go, let's see, if I go to this door, it says I'm at the door. I hit E and it opens. Cool. I'm going to go to this door. I'm at this door. Enter and it opens. I'm going to go to this door and hit E. The door is locked. It's just yelling at me. The door is locked. Uh, the door is locked. So I can't interact with this door. The door is locked. There's nothing I can do with it. Um, however, if I go to the player here, to this component, down here, the key ring, I have a has key. If I just check this, has key is now true. And uh, so if I go to the door and I say E, it says unlocked down here. So unlocked. And then I open it, and now I can go in. So I can go through the door now. So the, the door now used the key that I have and was actually functional. So uh, that was you know, a little more advanced, but we just showed the door script working with uh, two different types of animating doors, and then the, uh, the base door being um, turned into a input door, and then into a locked input door, each with its own functionality that derives from the original script's functionality. So I hope this helps you create a lot of interesting dungeons and uh, places for your players to explore and to uh, uh, hopefully they will check every nook and cranny as they go through your levels.